Hey everybody, welcome back to another Digital Making at Home uh, bonus features video. This one is adding on from the memory game, which is part of our entertainment theme. So if you haven't finished the memory game project that me and my sidekick Xavier did in a previous video, I suggest you go across uh, to rpf.io slash dm dash memory game, get hold of that basic starter project and watch the original video to get it to that stable and playable point that we got it to, because this video here is going to work on from that point. We're going to add to that game and make it a little bit more interesting. So the first one we're going to do in this series is to add a score sheet. So what it will do is once you finish your full sequence and you get through to the end of the game, rather than just doing another five point sequence, sequence again, it's going to add to that sequence and make it longer each time. So as you go on, the levels will get harder and harder and harder and it will keep track of your score as we move along. So in order to do that, I'm going to switch back to my Scratch project now. And you can see here, this is the finished project that Xavier and I were working on previously. You can see this whole mess of code we've got there. Um, but to add a score and make the game get more complicated, it's actually really, really simple. But we're going to talk through it so you can understand the principles of what we're doing. Now, at the moment, what happens, and I'll bring my sequence back up. So to do that, I just go down to my variables menu, and you see here where it says list sequence. Click the tick, and it brings my sequence back up, which just makes it easier for testing. I can see the sequence it feeds me, and I can win or lose based on what I need to test at the time. So here's my sequence and it's empty. When I click my green flag, it will add five different numbers to my sequence, all between one and four in a random order, and then it stops. And so I need to feed back that sequence in order to win the game. So, okay. And we get back to our win condition that Xavier set up with the techno dancing and stuff like that, which is his signature move. And so in order to make the game get a bit more complicated, what we need to do is have a score that it keeps track of. So to do that, we're gonna make a variable. Okay, and again, a variable is much like an empty jar with a label on it that says now, this one says score. So what that means is that anytime I need to check what the score is, I have that jar and I can check at the time. Okay, so right now it's five. Later on when I need to check again, I can say, okay, well now it's six, we've changed it. And I can just keep looking at that variable whenever I need it. It's something that's changeable that we can refer to when we require it. So in order to get my game to track that score, what I need it to do is I'm going to say, instead of just repeat five times, which makes it a static game, I'm gonna have it to repeat my score number of times. And so we can change that variable and every time it comes back around or iterates, it will change the number of things in my sequence. It will repeat the number of times that my score is set to. Now, right now, my score is set to zero, as you can see here. Okay, now having a score set to zero is not gonna be handy when I get to this repeat number because repeating something zero number of times means that I'll have a length of sequence that is automatically zero and logically I should go straight through to my win condition down here. It will broadcast one to everything and my game will think I've automatically won as soon as I click go. So let's just test and see if the logic works. Yep. So all that's happened there is I've got a score that's zero, I've got a repeat that's zero, and I instantly have a sequence that's zero, so I just win straight away. Not interesting. So at the beginning of my thing here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my set variable two, and I'm gonna plug that in here, and I'm gonna make that five, all right? So that's my basic score, and it doesn't matter that your base score is five, that's absolutely fine, it doesn't have to start at zero. Um, we have it set at five, and then if I click go now, it should run through it five times. Oh, no, okay. Ah, I know what I did wrong. So I didn't choose my variable to be score, and I hope some of you guys spotted that at home. I didn't, having a long day. So we've got score, fantastic. So now my score will be five, it will clear my sequence, it will clear my graphic effects because it made my little sprite look a bit weird, and then it should repeat five times. So I should get five random numbers in my sequence. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to check my win condition, right? So I should be able to remove all of those things down and I'll get to the end. But the problem I've got now is I'm not actually changing the score when I win. So the next thing I want it to do is to change score, making sure I select it right this time, by one. So I get to the end, once I win, it should change score up to six and it will come back around at the top. But there's a logical inconsistency here. So you'll see that once I get to the bottom and I click the green flag again, what's going to happen is it will set my score back to five. That's not helpful, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my control blocks and grab my forever loop and I'm going to plug it in around everything but set score to five. So the first time I click the green flag, it will set score to five. And then beyond that, it will come back around and keep doing all the cool things I want it to do in my game. So let's test that now. Cool, so you see it's set score to five up here and I've got that, so little pro tip for everybody, if you wanna change the way that looks, you can just double click on it, 
Okay, so you can have it say score next to it five, or you can just double click and have it the number five, so you know what that is. It's up to you, it's your aesthetic choice. And then once I've got this run, I'm gonna test and see if I can get it all finished. So I should just go three, two, two, four, two, and I get Xavier's signature techno dance. Interesting. So look, you can see here that's added my six numbers, but in my win condition, it's come all the way back around again, right? So what I want it to do is I want it to broadcast one and change score by one, but what I want it to do is I want it to wait for a little while before it kicks all the way around. So I'll grab a wait in here, okay? Because what's happening is it's overriding my dance celebrate thing. So what I want it to do here, okay, is I can change that simply by removing my broadcast loop. All right, and so now what's going to happen is once I get to the bottom, it will play my sound, it will repeat 180 times. Once it's done that, it will change score by one, it will wait, and then it will kick around. We may not need the wait in there, but it's nice to have just to keep everything nice and tidy. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now let's test it again. So I should be able to finish. Let's click the green flag to restart it. And we go back to five again, just like we want. And our sprite has lost all those weird colors. So we go three, one, one, four, one. Fantastic. And then it comes back around again. I get to the next level. Cool. So it might actually be nice to have an even longer wait in there than just the one second to give me some time to get past the techno dance winning condition. Let's change that up a little bit to three. Okay. And then I'm going to reset it so that we can see what happens. So again, green flag brings it back to five. We start all over again every time you click the green flag. Cool. One, one, two, one, three. And then we should wait three seconds, and then the next level kicks in. Awesome, that gives my player a little bit of time to do that, that's cool. So there's something else I could probably do there. I've got my wait three seconds, but that's, you know, not really as cool as it could possibly be. So what I want it to do is I'm gonna do another thing now where I'm gonna have it count down and tell you three, two, one, ready, and then kick off again. So to do that, it's really, really super duper easy. So we just come here and we say, say something for two seconds, but I'm gonna change that to one second. And I'm gonna grab this here and I'm gonna drag it into my forever loop and I'm gonna drag another one and another one and another one. So that's four in a row and these are gonna say three. Oh, let's put another dot in there for a proper ellipsis. Three, two, one, go. And now I can remove that weight at the back end which is pretty boring and just silence. And so now when I start again, you see my player count down, and here we go. Cool, and then we can test it again. Four, two, three, two, four. We get my Techno Xavier signature dance. And then it counts me down, it's changed my score, so I should get six things in my list now. Sweet, and so now I can test it again, and I should get seven in it, and I'll see it will say length seven next time I go through. And this will be the last test we do. So three, two, two, one, three, four. We get our signature techno dance again, and we should see my score change to seven. It'll count down, and then the length of my sequence will go up to seven. See, there we go, so we've got seven, that's cool. So what we might also do is I think I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to say, I'm gonna have it say something else for me. So I'm gonna have it say, let's go for a join. So I'm gonna have it say a join, okay? And what I wanna to say is gonna say, Welcome to level something, and I'm gonna have it go. Let's do an operator, because I want it to take away five from my score. So when we start off at five, that should be level one. So I'm gonna say minus, and I wanna have it say my score minus, well, let's plug that back in. Score plugs in there, cool. So welcome to level, oh, hang on a second. That's where I want it. So welcome to level my score 
because level five, we start with five points on level one, so five minus four is one. So I want that score minus four, and it will tell me that this is the level that I'm on. So I could say, welcome to level score minus four, and we'll check to see if that works now. Let's go. Welcome to level one. Three, two, one. I'll get five numbers in my random order. We use our sequence here, three, one, two, three, three. I win. It should come back around and say, welcome to level two. Welcome to level two. Three, two, one, bam, and we're off. We should get six in my length of sequence here. And that's pretty much it. So you've added a score that it's keeping track of, it's telling you when you've come through to the next level, and it follows around instantly without you having to click the green flag and reset the entire game. So that's our bonus feature there, everybody, to add a score to your game and to add levels, which is pretty cool. Um, but the next one we'll do is something a little bit different. So come around, watch our next video, and make sure that you're sharing all your work with us at rpf.io slash home, because uh, we love to see all the things that you're making. And please don't forget that Coolest Projects is opening soon for registrations. So remember to have a look at coolestprojects.org, and you can go in there and register for any of the cool projects you've made. If it's one of these ones from Digital Making at Home, or it's something else that you've produced on your own. We'd love to see what you're making. We really love it when our community shares with us. And don't forget we're doing live streams every Wednesday at two o'clock British summertime. So come around, have a look at our live streams where we code with young people and help them make the projects that they're interested in. Catch you later everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.